Boys and girls, welcome back to Starfield. In the last episode, we followed the Pilgrim's Clues, and we ended up coming to... I don't remember what the name of this planet is, actually, but we're meeting the Starborn. We're on their ship, and they want to talk to us, which I guess is better than them traveling to the lodge and killing my friends. So, let us see what do they want. Hello again. <laughs> do you remember the Emissary, perhaps? And their ship, the Helix? I believe they ambushed you above Neon and demanded that artifact you worked so hard to gain. Thank you for the stellar introduction. Your success is unprecedented. Before you came, we were just discussing how continued use of force against you is unwise. Damn right it is. <laughs> I don't think your patient counselor act is working on them. We are not a monolithic people. The Starborn are individuals. Some are united in cause. Others are in it for themselves. We are all in it for ourselves. Some of us are just more honest. The Emissary threatened your ship, demanded you hand over your artifact. How is that so different from what I did? We needed to warn you off. Every encounter with one of our kind could spell disaster. For whom, exactly? I say whoever can collect them should. Yeah, you're talking in circles. Yes. Let's talk about what really matters. The unity. You are on the path to it. It is a place, a gateway. It is where we were reborn. You've really come a long way since the Welcome to Constellation speech, haven't you? Well, this is interesting. I guess it explains why Sarah's unexplained death was unexplained. Now there is an explanation for the unexplained death. Is it a good one? I don't know. It can't be you. I saw you die. I'm not who you think I am. This universe is only the first one you've been to. I've seen hundreds. Where I came from, I was the one who stayed at the Lodge to protect the artifacts. You died on board the Eye while we held off the Hunter. One of me, at least. I collected the remaining artifacts, and they opened the way to the center of my universe, and the doorway to an infinite number of others. That is the Unity. When I stepped into it, I became a Starborn. It's how I've entered other worlds, including yours. Oh, I really don't like any of these options. So this unity is where the artifacts are from? The temples? They are all connected. Obviously. Ah, sure, great answer. And that's the problem. All the artifacts are needed to complete the armillary and open the way to the unity. In every universe, the Starborn fight over them. Innocent people die. You've witnessed the power granted by the temples. The anarchy that can be unleashed. Someone has to decide who should get them. Here it comes. The Emissary tells you only the worthy should enter heaven. You're twisting what I mean. They're hypocrites. They use the chaos caused by the hunt for the artifacts to establish an order where they decide who's worthy. I attacked your lodge because I wanted the artifacts, and you held me off. You got away. That wasn't some morality play. You didn't survive because of righteousness. You won because of persistence, luck, and skill. As I have done countless times. I was also human once. But what does it matter who or what I was when eternity is within your grasp? Well, so far I've been right about a lot of things. Keeper Achilles is letting on more than he knows whenever we were first talking to him. And, uh, <laughs> it appears that it is some sort of mantle of responsibility thing from Halo. Maybe not in the same way it is in the Halo universe, but it is a thing where, like, there are people in charge of the overall group of individuals within the universe, so... You're learning. My other self wants you to walk the path he walks, to 
give up to appreciate the universe you have. Easy for a person who has seen everything, done everything. I think you should see it for yourself. You've never come this far. Not in all the universes I've seen. The path to the unity is opening to you. You're going to tip the scales one way or another. Better your hand be on one of our sides. So, like, is this where the plot of the story is going to depend on, like, our morality and how our personal feelings come into this? Because the people that have been attacking us the entire time are now, like, known to be people that we're close with and... They're gonna try to get us to do evil things because they're people we like. Also, for what it's worth, I am, like, so sick of the multiverse thing in every piece of media. Like, just, just let it be one universe. The first time it happened that I was aware of, like, in Bioshock Infinite, that was fine. That was a mind fuck. It was cool, though. We dealt with it. Ever since then, it's just, it just seems like an excuse to do absolute head-ass activity with your storytelling, and I just never like it. I might be the only person that doesn't like it, but it just... It gets boring, bro. Why Why would you be able to tell a good story and have, like, compelling characters whenever you can just kill one of them off and then bring them back because there's another universe that has that same person? Bingo! I want a truce between all three of us. Give you some time to think over which approach to the unity is the one you want. Mine or the Hunter's. Yes. Let's see how willing you are to live under someone else's rules. Just remember, one of us isn't trying to judge you. I'm sorry, did I... did I miss... I guess now is the part where we learn what they want, but like, did I miss something? Did you guys want something different? Also, in their footsteps, just another callback to like, Fallout 3. What is this? How do you guys' ships work? What is the point of this? This is stupid. For someone that's as advanced as you guys seem to be, what is I'm the sure point of this? Yeah, I, I do, I do. I'm just questioning the logic of your ship. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I'll tell you everything I can. Different. I never know who you are when I meet a new version. But so much of you stays the same. It's hard. But each universe is precious in its own way. Mine will never have its original you in it again, as yours won't have its real me. You try to protect the artifacts, keep them from being abused? Like... You've seen the terror the Hunter causes. Every time a Starborn goes through the Unity, they get more artifacts, find more temples, gain more power. We can't let more like him abuse these gifts to destroy whatever's in their way. Literally like three feet away from us, so I'm glad we're having this conversation out loud. It's not an easy experience to describe, but the Unity will speak to you. Offer you the chance to become Starborn. You will be leaving this universe behind to be reborn. Everything you were before will be gone. Maybe that's why it offers the choice. Compassion? Or is it testing us? What exactly is the armillary? I mean, it's just the portal. No? When all the artifacts are assembled. The device they create is called the Armillary. In many ways, it's a model of the multiverse itself. Through it, you can reach the Unity. And from there, you can become Starborn. That's good and well, but none of those questions I asked got answers. Unless they're speaking in like some super advanced riddle that my peanut brain can't comprehend, you literally told me nothing. The Maybe. Unity is meant for whomever can get there. Don't fall for that talk of worthiness. I don't think that's what she was saying at all. You might think the emissary is on your side, but your persistence is what forced them to tell you the truth. Remember that. This dialogue pisses me off. You, After you attacked the lodge, you let me go. Why? Brother was losing the fight. I would have killed him if Bethesda didn't say he had to stay alive. Whoever created the artifacts and built those temples is playing a game with us. One whose prize is access to the center of all creation. There are no rules. Whoever gets all the pieces wins. And I've won. Over and over. 
I don't kill for the unity. I find the easiest pathway to it. Also, I want to go back to something I said earlier. Whenever I said I knew the Keeper knew more than he was letting on, I'm aware this is a different person. The Keeper on uh, New Atlantis is a different person than the person I'm talking to. It's just they're they're connected somehow. So I've simply found that it's the quickest way: talking, forming alliances, waiting for the right moment to commit theft. It's all so tiresome. I'll admit, you getting away has been the most interesting thing to happen in quite some time. As soon as I realized what had happened, I knew I needed to wait until this meeting with the Emissary to decide what to do about you. <laughs> no, we always end up having this meeting at this time. But it's the usual affair. Can we make peace? No. Oh, how tragic. Honestly, I was beginning to wonder why I kept tending. And it's bad habit I started a long time ago. Perhaps I just like meeting the emissary to gloat. <laughs> but you have provided something quite new to talk about. Maybe you're a random die roll. Or maybe the unity is finally responding to all my hard work. Um, we already know why he let us go. Why is the emissary a hypocrite? They enter the unity, take artifacts from others, employ force. All the things I do. I am many things, but I would never tell anyone what to do with their gifts. That is your decision, not someone else's. The Emissary wants to become the judge of who gets to enter, but the Unity itself doesn't judge. Alright, there's no progressive dialogue here. From the inside looking in, they do the exact same thing. The Hunter is just more honest, honestly. I don't necessarily understand the Emissary's problem with it, because like it's not like finding the artifacts is easy. Like Even if you find one artifact, you have to find how many more artifacts to actually get to where you need to be. Like Apparently I'm a special case, because obviously, like thinking outside of the game, I'm the main character. There aren't too many main characters in the realm of Starfield, so it's not, a, it's not like a reoccurring thing where like people are going to collect all the artifacts on accident. I don't know, I'm kind of on board with the Hunter, but neither of them are really that good. If there's a third option where we go like the yes- hello? I want to give you something. A way to another artifact, but also a lesson in how dangerous they can be. Seek the moon of old Earth. There are secrets there you must discover for yourself. Here, to open the way. Hey, you're, you Starborn sure like your you must see for yourself nonsense. I do not always know if you are a person I should be helping. Forgive me. I have also found I that advice is a poor substitute for experience. I ask you again. You should also talk to your colleagues in Constellation. I am sure they have gathered. Part of me wonders what they will all say about what Okay, so that's in their footsteps complete. Um, What was I saying right before she started talking to me? I don't know if there's a third option where we get to go like the Yes Man in New Vegas route where we're the independent leader of everything by ourselves. because I don't know if siding with either the Emissary or the Hunter is going to be something that's beneficial or good. Because obviously they're not in this for alliances. They've been doing the same thing for however long they've been doing it and guess what? They're still not on the same page. So I don't see why me would be any different. I don't think they're going to want to align with me. Have we cleaned up at least? Okay, yeah, everything is back to where it should be, except for... No, oh, that's in the same place. But like I said, yeah, like, I just don't think they're in this for alliances. I don't think they're gonna do that, so... I feel like if there's an hey, independent option, I've it would be the best. with the others, and I'd like to get everyone together. To say goodbye. You know. To Sarah. You're not gonna believe this? I just talked to her. Thank you. It wouldn't be the same without you there. Oh, it probably would. I'll have everything set up in a few days. A few days, of course. Like. Five UT days, okay. Like, all things considered, I don't really 
mess with y'all like that. I'm never here. I'm always out doing my own thing. And I mean that in, like, the nicest way possible, because I am kind of, like, the leader of your guys' little faction. But, like, I'm, I'm never here. Um, where do I go? Here? Closer? Mateo told us about your pilgrim's voyage. You found it, didn't you? The meaning of unity. I don't know if I'm allowed to tell you. It's the center of a multiverse. Okay, no, we are. We're allowed to tell them. There's an infinite number of me out there. I feel sorry for all of them. Sarah is alive at first. I know we can't say that. Wait, say that again? Multiple universes? Yep. You can't possibly mean what I think you mean. It's what I just said. the responsible one. But the big bombshell of what we're actually building here might need another second to sink in. Want to go over this whole multiple universe thing for everyone? Yes, I wouldn't mind a little more detail. What is there not to get? There's this universe that we exist in, but there's multiple of them. There are multiple Mateos. Unfortunately, there are multiple Barretts. Probably less unfortunately, because he's actually a cool character. There are multiple universes with the exact same planet, the exact same systems, the exact same cities, and the exact same people, but they're not the same as us. Explains why the Starborn want the artifact so bad. Get them all and... You've got a gateway to infinity. I don't even want to think about the physiological changes you'd need to travel between universes. Don't the Starborn already Plus, have those changes, though? what would do to though? the mind? Enlightenment? Or oblivion? Like the Hunter? You have the opportunity to reach the closest thing to your god that might exist. And you're second-guessing it? One doesn't approach the afterlife without some trepidation. I'm confused on what Barrett just said. The Starborn have already done the thing. That's why they're... Starborn, right? You okay? No, because now I'm confused. Because I thought the Starborn were already, like, the peak, but apparently there's more after it. You're right. We have to see the unity for ourselves. I don't know if you're allowed to you come. Know. Now, once everyone's head stops spinning from all of this, we can get back to work. Uh, not to make a sharp turn in a grand tale, but I got the eye fixed up. Bruised, but still blinking. Let me know when you're ready to follow up on what it's seen. Okay. Talk to Vladimir. Dusty. Dusty. Let's talk. Uh, when the time's right. I guess, I okay, I'd rather talk to you hey, than... Uh, let's not stick around the lodge too long. We should get out there. They all want to talk to me. I'm popular. What, Barrett? Uh, we're having this conversation that I had with Sarah a few episodes ago where she got really, really mad at me for not taking the science option. She got super mad at me for taking the Asilis over the microbe, and I forgot everybody in this place is a scientist, so they're all gonna judge me. Alright, he's just going through all the stuff that I've done since we last talked. It's funny how everybody has lines of dialogue. I probably skipped all that, but it's funny how everybody has lines of dialogue for talking about me being a Freestar Ranger, but not a member of the UC Vanguard. Alright, what's up, Vlad? These last glimpses from the eye are from the farthest fringes of known space. Could be the only remaining pieces outside the hands of the Starborn. A follow-up. Catch a smile out there. Again, I still have no idea what that means. You need a ship with a grav jump range of 21 light years to reach your destination. Grav jump range is influenced by the ship's grav drive, the ship's mass, and your astrodynamic skill. Okay, so the game is going to force me to level up a skill I really didn't want to put any thought into. Tragic. Alright. Alright, so I leveled up my astrodynamics level 1 level. I don't know how much I need to level it up to get going, but uh... Can't have that cred stick. Oh, they haven't cleaned up their rooms after the attack. Oh, they, it's gonna even give me that option. Just wait, sleep five days until the memorial. Optional, wait 24 hours to skip the memorial. Attend the service. I'm gonna go. I don't see why I would skip it. Unless we just want Constellation to not like us. Where is it at? Why is it telling me to go outside? I thought maybe I would come up with something to say, but I've got nothing. So instead, I thought I would quote something that gave me comfort a long time ago. Is God real? The more proper question would be, is reality divine? 
Existence itself is a mystery which yearns to be uncovered. What is goodness but a comparison to the good? What is existence but a participation in being? For where the diversity of the universe inspires awe and wonder, it exists only in contrast to a simplicity so pure that it may only be understood as primordial and even divine. Our essence is what was imagined by its mind, but what we consider imagining and what we consider mind are in fact so far beyond our understanding that even these metaphors are like the tiny white caps on a massive searching sea. There's more, but those are the parts that speak to me the most. I, um, thank you. That was really thoughtful, Mateo. Thank you. Does anyone else want to say anything? Say a few words. I, okay. My last interaction with Sarah before she died was her telling me to get a wrench. <laughs> The, 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 the Bethesda text option is making me look at the podium. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to awkwardly look down during this entire speech. And we're a silent protagonist, so there's actually no audio coming out of our speech. If anyone else wants to say something. What an under like, not to ruin the moment, but like, what an underwhelming memorial. If that's how, like, my speech goes, leave when you're ready. Oh, is there more? I don't often speak about what I believe in. It seems so redundant with how I live. But death is one of those occasions where it's hard not to look inward. Our friend is gone. There's no afterlife or second meetings. No God in heaven that is curating a perfect ending for us. So it's up to us. We are what lives on. The pain of loss inspires us to greater action than that is the good that comes from it. Humanity is what truly creates our world. We are that judge things to be good or evil, joyful or mournful. Let us take responsibility for it. Let us remember what we have lost. Walter, are you part of the House of Enlightenment? I never knew that. Yes, well, I like to keep some things private. Okay. Who's next? Who are you? No disrespect, who are you? I've never met you. Aja Mamasa? I... I have never seen you before. You all might not like thinking about this, but when we die, everything about us breaks down, decomposes, gets eaten up by insects and microbes. Or, due to the lack of a biosphere, we are simply carried away by space and time until we sizzle in a distant sun's corona or get pulled in some gravitational field and coalesce with other debris. Not comforting, huh? But I disagree. Do you know what I find uncomfortable? The thought that after I die, the universe is just going to stand still forever. Could you imagine? The fact is that the universe goes on, that life goes on, that things do not just sit still. That right there is the comfort that I need. Yeah, we die, and some people go way before they should. But the universe doesn't care, not because it's evil, but because it's infinite, ever expanding. And who wouldn't want to be a part of infinity, even if it's just for a short while? Listen. We don't worry about ourselves before we were born, do we? Of course not. We emerge from the universe as we return to it. And for one beautiful moment, we are here together. 
Um, yes, that certainly was an interesting perspective there. Yes, it was. I'm not sure what his point was, but that is where... Oh, that appears to be the end of it. Everybody's leaving. Either that or Mateo really didn't like Barrett's monologue. All right, that appears to be the end of it since Mateo left. Where is Sam Co? Nope, I have no idea where Sam Co is at. Weird he didn't attend, but I guess it is what it is. But boys and girls, that is where this episode is going to end. I just not a lot really going on this episode. A lot of talking. But we always have to have a few episodes like that to get to where we need to be. I'm going to try next episode to figure out what we have to do to, I guess, progress the main plot as much as we can. But until then, boys and girls, I hope you have enjoyed. Leave that like and sub down below. If you want to see the no commentary run of this, go to my channel, Why the Tuck No Commentary. It'll be up by probably the end of later in this day that this is uploaded to this channel. But until then, boys and girls, a pizza.